January 2011, at the Belgian Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, the topic was BMIX versus CMIX. A group of Belgian and international surgeons performed live surgery in the morning and theoretical discussion took place in the afternoon. Our preference is for biaxial mix as shown here. Here is a case with a moderate pupil, is on Flomax and does not have a red reflex because of a dense cataract. Vision Blue is used under viscoelastic, almost painting the anterior capsule and then an anterior capsulorexis is developed which is about 5 mm being of an adequate size for IOL implantation and indeed ideal for this. A heavy OVD in the form of Elon DV is used to form the capsulorexis mounted on a cystotomy. The capsulorexis is completed and hydrodissection done taking care to allow decompression of the anterior chamber as one does not want to pop the capsule through these small incisions. Biaxial phaco emulsification is then undertaken and as you can see neat grooves are made. A divide and conquer technique in spite of the difficult case is employed because that seems to be most efficient. As the first groove is deepened, further deepening of the groove can be done in a very controlled manner with the irrigating chopper merely acting as an anterior chamber maintainer. Once the groove is deep enough to consider cracking, the irrigating chopper dips under the iris plane but at that point no vacuum is employed. Without vacuum flow through the system is minimal and the iris does not flop. The nucleus can be segmented into two quadrants and rotated 90 degrees ready for re-fake emulsification and sculpting in the next right angle groove. Again the irrigating chopper will turn to the iris but when it dips behind the iris watch the signals to the left there is no flow in the system at all as no aspiration is used. Quadrants are drawn into the anterior chamber and then emulsified sometimes with a bit of chopping using the irrigating chopper. As fake emulsification in the iris plane is actually quite safe as the duty cycle is down to 20 and the ultrasound power being used is very minimal minimizing the risk to endothelial damage and indeed wound burn. As the last bits of nucleus are removed, the irrigating chopper is moved out of the iris plane to avoid the risk of damage to the capsule should anterior chamber collapse occur. Although that is rare with modern fluidics, irrigation aspiration using a biaxial technique is very successful in achieving cortical cleanup all softness matter is removed in a controlled manner in spite of a small pupil. Once IA has been completed and we have a clean bag, we reinflate it with this elastic device and enlarge the wound slightly from 1.5 to 1.8 mm to allow for the implantation of an acreos mixed lens, the MI60. This is a very flexible lens which is very useful for such situations and we will see it now. A Viscoject 1.8 injector is used, preloaded with a bit of viscoelastic and then the acreos mixed lens is removed from its holder. placed into the viscoject cartridge which is then closed and mounted. It is important to make sure that all the four small feet are tucked in so that they are not snagged in the injector. Once that has been done, 
by manual wound assisted techniques employed the second instrument stabilizing the eye and the injector engaging the incision but not quite entering the eye. The intraocular lens enters the capsule of the bag and following removal of OVD and insertion of a small amount of cefuroxin, the case is done. I hope you will all consider by manual mix to be an option in cases uh, which can be challenging such as this case with a small pupil, flow mats and high, high hypermetropia.